Hello everyone, and welcome back to some different content. Something that I used to do more and would like to do again. Which is a review. Uh, review-ish. Um, this is going to be a semi-scripted discussion of Apex Legends. Um, which is a game that I haven't spent a lot of time with. Oh, about six-ish hours I think at this point, maybe less. Um, but I felt like I needed to get this video out. Uh, in a timely manner, as it's been about about two weeks, and lots of people are talking about it, so I should put my voice out there, because my voice is important, because I have an important opinion. Listen to me, I'm important. Anyway, uh, Apex Legends is a free-to-play battle royale game, um, like many others at this point in time, in 2018, 2019, um, made by Respawn Entertainment which is, in some sense, a subsidiary of EA, uh, EA games. Now, because of what I just said, this whole review needs to come with a caveat. I have a prepared statement that, well, I've got a whole script-ish for this thing, which is like three pages of ramblings, but I have a prepared statement for this. Electronic Arts is an evil company that sabotages, absorbs, consumes, and subsequently crushes smaller competitors in the gaming market. It is so huge that its terrible anti-consumer business practices and frequently broken and generally mediocre games are negated by the massive profit margins on one out of every ten they release. Do not give EA money under any circumstances. That aside... Respawn Entertainment is, in some sense, a subsidiary of EA. The, the relationship is not entirely clear, as it is muddy with many uh, develop, uh, developers and publishers, um, but it is more, it is not just uh, being published by EA, it is in, the, the Respawn is a subsidiary. Now, um, Respawn has been previously known for Titanfall games and a few others, but most recently Titanfall 1 and 2. Um, so the utter lack of prior marketing for this game, this was released with zero fan. Well, I shouldn't say zero fanfare. It was released with no lead up. They just announced it and said, it's playable now. Um, and this is, uh, in the context of Anthem, um, Bioware's new property, uh, being right on the cusp of release, I think, next week. Um, and they ran a beta last week and the week before, and it people were not super happy with it. Um, and no one was really surprised, um, which is a shame. But here we are. So the other, the other lack of prior marketing suggests to me that EA doesn't have a lot of faith in Anthem uh, and that they're basically hedging their bets for Q1 profits by pushing this out. Um, it's unclear to me whether this was al always the intent, um, but the fact that there was no lead up or anything like that does make me question their priorities. Something tells me if they expected Anthem was going to do well, they probably would have pushed it out another until Q2. Um, but that's purely speculation on my part. I don't begrudge the existence of this game in a vacuum, um, but it's probably going to be, in some sense, some sense, excuse me, the death of two studios, both Respawn and Bioware. Um, if Anthem does not do, if Anthem, well, if, even if Anthem is good, it is pretty likely that this, that Apex Legends is going to cut into its market share. Even if they are, even though they are somewhat different in their game type, uh, it is EA releasing two similar-ish shooters, and one of them happens to be free. Um, so, how do you think that's going to go? That's not to say that there won't people who buy both won't be people who buy both, but when if money is tight for people, they're more likely to just play Apex Legends instead of spending money on Anthem. This is likely to not look good for Bioware in the long term. Um, likewise, uh, I don't like that uh, Apex Legends is coming out um, sort of without 
fanfare purely because nobody really knew that Respawn was making it. Um, everybody thought that Respawn, despite mediocre sales on Titanfall 2, um, <laughs> mediocre, big air quotes, because EA, EA thinks everything that doesn't make $10, $10 million is mediocre, um, or $10 million sales, rather. <laughs> Uh, it, there is some concern that Titanfall 3 will never exist. Um, initially, that was because they figured, everyone kind of figured that EA was going to destroy Respawn and absorb them, as they have done with many a company before them. Um, but, well, I'll talk about it a little bit more later. The concern is right now that they have... Respawn has said that they are not making Titanfall 3 right now. They are making a premium Titanfall game. That is their phrasing. Um, but it is not Titanfall 3. Explicitly not Titanfall 3. So, some concern there. Now again, uh, I only played the Titanfall multiplayer... Uh, like free to play whenever it was it was in beta or something a free weekend or something like that I did not pay EA for that service but I liked what I played anyway let's get past that um, I am concerned that Apex is going to kill respawn slowly as it becomes their major property and uh, they may never make a full Titanfall game again which, even if it is not the, my, you know, number one interest, um, it would still be a shame to lose an IP like that. Um, one that really seems to have promise. So, in a more general sense, um, on the topic of free-to-play, I'm not going to pretend to be innocent. Uh, there are definitely a number of free-to-play games that I like very much. Uh, Warframe, for one. Um, but free-to-play, even when executed ethically is a practice that uh in theory is supposed to let people pay what they feel is what they feel is appropriate um for the experience they're having um but in reality preys upon human psychology to milk money out of people who don't know what they're doing um free-to-play monetization strategies are both targeted and effective and most effective against the most vulnerable members of society, uh, especially children and undereducated people who may not have a full grasp of the money they're spending. So here now, I would like to mark at uh, mark the beginning of the end of the current game economy. Uh, Apex Legends is, I think, a, a very solid nail in the coffin of um, typical pay for a game once and play uh, as it is just another in the line of um, free-to-play games that show enough economic promise uh, that they will damage the industry by teaching consumers that games should be free and teaches large publishers as a result that anything that can't be monetized is not worth making. Um, it's a dangerous prospect uh, and one that has already crippled the mobile gaming market, though admittedly that was a market that had not established a history of paid content yet. Now, to get into the game itself, um, I don't play Battle Royale games, nor do I generally play multiplayer shooters. I'm bad at them. Um, but this is made by a studio who I generally respect and think makes good content. Um, and in seeing seeing some footage, uh, <laughs> the, the initial trailer was terrible. But um, in seeing some footage of the game, uh, it looked as close as I thought I could expect to a Battle Royale game that I'd be interested in playing. And given that I've tried out every, um, you know... Uh, every fashionable game type as they've come out. I've played MOBAs. I've played, you know, whatever comes out. I've played one of each. Um, I figured I had to play one, and I could spare the bandwidth to give this one a try. So the game itself, <laughs> we're just going to skip over Origin. 
origin is an atrocity that's a known quantity. Um, but this is a very good PC version of the game. I played this on PC. It's also available on PS4 and Xbox. Um, it's a very good PC port or PC release. Uh, just like Titanfall 2 was, it runs pretty well. Um, the auto detection of your like GPU, uh, the settings that it sets are not perfect. Um, but there's lots of video settings that can be toggled. You know, it, it looks like a genuine PC port. It's not a cheap port at all. Um, game performance is nice and scalable, um, but it's somewhat CPU bound, weirdly. Um, my, uh, I have an i5-3570K running at stock, and uh, it runs fine. But when I tried to record footage with OBS, um, which with my presets doesn't even use that much CPU um, the CPU would max out and frame rate and audio processing would suffer dramatically uh, I don't really know what the deal was there um, I you know Apex wasn't maxing out my CPU all the time prior to that but for some reason um, yeah it, it just didn't like running a lot of other things in the background uh, it also looks pretty ugly on my GPU, even though I have a I have a GTX 670 with two gigs of VRAM. It's pretty old at this point, um, and it's shown it's showing its age more and more with every passing year. Um, but uh, I think the the real the real kicker here was with with two gigs of VRAM. Um, uh, Apex Legends notes that as very low <laughs> VRAM. Um, by comparison, I also tried this on my work computer, which has a GTX 745, um, which has four gigs of VRAM and it looks dramatically better, uh, and runs almost as well. Um, that, that is a card with half the processing power, but double the, the VRAM. Um, so it's, you know. Playing this on an older system is probably going to suffer, but generally runs pretty darn well, even on very budget. But anything, any GPU in the past two years is probably going to be fine. Um, as far as the gameplay goes, uh, where, where do I start? I'm kind of all over the place in my notes, but um, it has a cut down version of the Titanfall 2 movement and combat systems, but it feels very much like them. Um, in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if, if I found out they basically had reworked the, the Titanfall 2 uh, multiplayer with new art assets and some adjustments. Um, but it is a cut down version. It's still good, and if you've never played Titanfall, it's probably fantastic. Um, but if you have, there's definitely the sense of it being simplified. Uh, the grapple and the wall run are gone, and I'm sure they were removed for, like, accessibility reasons, and potentially so they can even be added as character abilities. There is one character that has a grapple, but it's not, it's not for everyone. Um, so I understand why they did it for accessibility, but I, I miss it nonetheless. Weapon design is terrible. Um, and some people just got mad hearing that. But uh, it's not to say there's no artistry or there's no. it's not interesting. It's just for the Battle Royale genre and for the quick gameplay, um, they are terrible. Because this is a game where you need, you need to be able to do pretty much everything in about three seconds. Which means you need to ID every weapon immediately by its outline and uh probably somewhere in this footage i don't know i'm not going to edit it much uh i show off some of the 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 um the weaponry but the outlines are not that clear and even when uh firing them they are not super distinctive in their handling uh so trying to id what you have in your hands and what you've just picked up or what you see in somebody else's hands is tricky um, probably made worse by some of the skins um, that are available. 
This does use a uh, a loot a loot system similar to or a, a reward system rather similar to Overwatch and those types of games where you get loot boxes for every level up, um, or maybe not every level up. I don't know if it's every level up or every few levels. In any case, um, there's all kinds of customiza uh, aesthetic customizations for all of the characters, for all the weapons, so on and so on and so on. Um, there are uh, there there are eight classes. Um, they they use sort of a class system, which is unusual for battle royale. I think this is the only one that does it. Also similar to Overwatch, but well. More, more accurately, it's similar to every Nexon game ever. Uh, if you watched my Ghost in the Shell review, or if you played it with me, or God forbid, played it yourself, um, you'll already be familiar with the type of quote-unquote classes that, uh, that this game uses. There's not a lot of differentiation. It's mainly, you know, you have a handful of abilities that you can use, um, and which which character you picked uh, differentiates which ones you can use. Um, it's it's nice to have that be different in Battle Royale, ga Royale, ugh, Battle Royale games, but it doesn't add a lot of diversity. Um, and considering that the game enforces squad play, the fact that most of the, most of the abilities don't synergize with each other at all, um, which is something I've complained about before in other reviews, um, the whole thing seems a little moot. Uh, it'd probably be better served by a, like a wider range of equipment drops. Um, it is sort of a short list, um, that would let you customize, like, your character build on the fly. Um, but, you know, they, I'm sure they had to make des design concessions for, uh, being a battle royale game with a certain target audience. Um, they couldn't make it too complex. Uh, there are currently eight characters to choose from, um, or, well, really six. There are two that are currently locked behind their unlock system. Um, but, uh, given the way the UI is laid out, um, I expect, I think it's fair to expect that the number, that the number of characters available is probably going to double or triple within at least probably a year or two. Uh, I would expect probably a new character every, at least every couple of months, if not every month. Um, there's not a huge amount of balancing to be done, so to speak. Most of the abilities are, are utility. Um, so it's not that complex. I, I say dismissively. Um, but the, the two characters that are locked are if you use the exchange rate from real world money to real world US dollars to uh, their phony currency, um, each of those characters is about $7.50. Uh, I will admit that's fairly standard for the, um, this, the type of free-to-play game like this. It's, I think that was pretty much how much a lot of, like, Nexon games and things were. I may take that back, but I'm sure I've played games where the standard cost of monet uh, of of real world currency for a new character was about seven fifty. That doesn't mean I like it, but it is fairly standard. So, yeah, um, like I like I was saying, it is squad based, and that is enforced. You really can't run solo. Um, the, the game really wants you to play together with a squad. And I, I really prefer that. Um, I, if I think that is one of the major reasons I never wanted to try out a battle royale game before is just, I am not good enough to survive in a free for all. It's just not going to happen. Um, as nightmarish as it sounds to run with randoms all the time or most of the time, uh, it's really well implemented. Um, Someone's been there. In terms of gameplay, uh, rather than standard battle, battle royale games where if you're dead, you're out, um, since you're in a, in a, a fixed team, 
Um, as long as there aren't any asshole lone wolves who just run off and don't help, um, you can. There are several stages of death. First, there's the uh, there's the down stage where, um, as long as no one executes you, uh, uh, one of your squad mates can run up to you and pick you up in a matter of seconds. Um, and even after that, you turn into a box um, that that enemies and allies can loot. But also, uh, you your your allies uh, have like two minutes, I think, to go to your box and pick up your card. Um, and they can take that card to a respawn point. Now, the respawn points are usually in vulnerable areas, so you have to care be careful about doing it. Um, but they can take your card to a respawn point, and that will respawn you in a matter of, like, 15 seconds or so. You'll be dropped back in, you won't have any of your gear, but you'll be back in the fight. Um, which adds an, uh, a nice facet as well. Um the as far as the the out or or the meta game implementation shall we say um that's the part that really seems like it would be a nightmare mics exist uh, but but i do want i do want to say it's really well implemented mics exist but by default they are pushed to talk hallelujah this is like the first game that seems to default to push to talk I don't know why this is so hard, but pretty much every other game that has voice chat seems to be by default open mic. I don't know why. Why is this such a rarity? In any case, push to talk is on by default. And even if you switch to an open mic, there's a noise gate. There's a noise gate on it. So it's pretty, somebody is going to have to like try pretty hard to be the open mic asshole who has like music in the background or a baby or whatever else. So, you know, they've they've there's a couple of blocks there that make it less potential for misery. Um, even more so, there is a feature to transcribe voice chat to text, which is unbelievable. Now, in my experience thus far, only having played maybe a dozen or two, maybe a dozen or two dozen games. The, the ones where I had that feature on, it did not work very well. It was not very accurate. Um, but whether or not that was because of people's terrible mics or whatever else, it's hard to say. Um, but the fact that that exists at all is incredible and something that every multiplayer game should strive to have, especially with the rise of things like, um, uh, Google, Google speech to text and, you know, other, other free APIs you can call for, for speech to text stuff. Um, I don't know how that operates in real time, but, uh, how well it operates in real time, but that is something that should be standard in the next few years. I would hope it's bad if it isn't. Um, furthermore, if you want to turn off voice chat entirely, it's not that big a deal. You can still have pretty robust communication with your teammates because there is an awesome ping system. Um, all of the pings are contextual. Uh, there's a bunch of options you can select, similar to Overwatch, but way more full-fledged, um, for indicating things like enemies and uh, crates that have all areas that have already been opened or um, you know things like that. Gear pickups uh, will be called out in vo like both in text and in voice and on screen. Um, so if I already have a level two shield, uh, I can ping it, and I'll my character will say out loud to my teammates, "Hey, level two shield here," which is just fantastic. And again, a feature that I am shocked basically hasn't existed up until this point. It is fantastic and should be the standard. Um, and anybody who doesn't try and mimic this is a fool. Matchmaking is pretty quick. Um, usually no more than about a minute. 
I'm probably going to leave matchmaking in these videos at some point, so you'll see how quick it usually is. Uh, but having 10 million players, literally 10 million players, um, surely helps with that speed. Um, I'm not sure if matchmaking itself is any good. It's kind of hard to tell because I don't know what their design intent is. Um, I think it might be unbalanced by design, but I might be giving them too much credit there. Most of the time when I was getting into games, uh, I was both in squads and against um, people who already had dozens, if not potentially a hundred or more levels over me, meaning they've, you know, been playing it 12 hours a day since it came out, but I'll reserve judgment there. Um, basically meaning I, I was not playing against other, mostly not playing against other people who had my same level of experience with the game. Um, and this is a thing you hear all the time about multiplayer games and people coming into games late. But it's only been out two weeks, and yet, like, you know, there's a drastic... Even, even ignoring my inability to play games like this, um, there's a drastic skill gap. So, hard to say what the matchmaking intent is there, but it's probably worth noting. Um... That said, it's super quick to get out of game and back into game uh, because that matchmaking is so fast, so you don't really mind that much. There's not like there's not a lobby that you get into first until wait. You just you just wait in the main menu and do your do your stuff. You uh, get into game and then you pick characters and go. That's it. It's like two minutes, which is great. In the end. Um, this really feels like a half-baked version of, it, it's like battle, it's like Borderlands Battle Royale, really. That's the feeling I was getting a lot of the time. Um, and I think the aesthetic ha informs that a lot. Um, but, uh, it's a good reminder that Respawn knows what they're doing. Um, to their credit, in repeated interviews and press releases, uh, a lot of the higher-ups at Respawn have made it abundantly clear that they are basically an EA subsidiary in name, um, and they kind of hate their masters very openly. <laughs> um, there's some pretty pretty awesome gems from some of the... Uh, from I'm trying to remember who. I think, like, the creative director uh, basically saying, uh, you know, openly spitting in the face of, um, like the EA PR guy who was assigned to wrangle him. Um, and they've pretty much, uh, several of the higher ups have pretty much said uh, that they all burn the company down on their way out the door. If EA starts giving too pushy uh, of orders. So I'm interested to see where respawn goes long term. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I hope that Titanfall has a long life, even if that life does give money to EA. Um, anything to, you know, anything to broaden the art of games and not shrink it further, as EA has been doing their damnedest to do. Um, this game reminded me how much I like the Titanfall combat system so much uh, that despite what I said before about don't give EA money. I bought a copy of Titanfall 2 for the PS4. I did it for the PS4 because fuck Origin. I'm not dealing with that. Um, and uh, despite having personally having a general moratorium on ever giving EA money, um, I validate this in my head of basically it's far enough. I gave them $8.14 is how much I got my copy of Titanfall 2 for PS4 for. So also, you should go get a copy maybe because it's pretty good. Um, even though I, I'm basically, I basically only bought it for the single player. And it's far enough out from its release that I feel like it's an appropriate spitting in the face of EA. Of saying, this is what I actually wanted. And in some way or another, you probably took that away from me and gave me something less um 
So I'm going to play Titanfall, the Titanfall 2 single player, and I think I'm going to enjoy it since I enjoyed the combat but not the multiplayer aspect when I tried it out before. Um, and as much as I wish Respawn the best, um, I will not be playing Apex Legends. I certainly won't begrudge anyone who does, um, and I'd go so far to say that uh, if one of my friends said they really liked it and wanted to play it, I would play it with them. But it's nothing extraordinary. It's very much in the free-to-play Battle Royale sector um, and not something I'm particularly interested in. Um, but that's... It's a pretty good game. If... If simple. <laughs> anyway. Um, I think I've hit all the points I wanted to hit. Uh, if there's any addenda, they'll be in the... In the comments or, or, or notes below. Anyway, yeah, I'm out of practice on this. This video is just sort of going to peter out on this I don't know how to finish this note. Anyway, here's your bonus video. Hope you enjoyed it.